I invite Dr. Pradeep Nehmade for his talk on plating is easier and safer? Uh, plating is simpler and safer. Someone as lazy as me I would like to uh, go for a simpler technique rather than a uh, skill uh, full uh, a a technique that requires more skill. Okay, so that's the place I work. And um, the, dis the discussion of plating versus nailing is age old. This is when I was roaming around uh, in Rome and I found Plato and Aristotle discussing about plating and I took that picture. Okay, so it is that old anyway. Okay, so tibia fracture, uh, diaphyseal fracture, there is hardly any dilemma we have to do nailing. Uh, now, metaphyseal diaphyseal junction, that is proximal one third or distal one third, there is a dilemma whether you need to do a plating or nailing. And a metaphyseal fracture, that is distal one fourth fracture, whether we want to do a extreme plating versus uh, extreme nailing versus plating again, is a dilemma. So, nailing enthusiasts, they will vouch for the close nature of the surgery. They will thumb their chest about the skills of getting close reduction, as Dr. Sachin has done in his talk. Uh, of course, there are not going to be any subcutaneous implant and uh, uh, um, theoretically it allows early weight bearing. However, uh, and also they will do plate bashing. They will say, oh, there is soft tissue problem. There are prominent hardware and there is a stress transfer at the proximal aspect of the plate that can occur uh, after the plating. On the other hand, plating enthusiast will say, oh, it's a simple and faster technique. We can do the surgery in a knee extended position we have more control on the alignment. We can use plate as a reduction tool. And they emphasize that plating can still be biological, MIPO and all. And they will do nail bashing. They'll say, oh yeah, this causes knee pain. It causes malalignment. We need to do in flex position. That is again troublesome. And a difficult reduction technique that we need to uh, keep it into armamentarium if we want to do a play nailing. Okay, a fracture like this, let's say distal one-third, uh, um, almost, you know, going towards mid sharp but yes, in the distal part, uh, we can do very well nailing, yeah, and Dr. Sachin also showed very good examples of this. Um, a very good alignment can be obtained. What happens when the fracture starts getting a little bit distal, uh, we start getting fibula fracture, and look at this fracture. We start getting uh, angular malalignments, we can start getting rotational malalignments, and we start getting um, the translational malalignment. So this is one case, if you see, uh, again, a slight virus here. Again, this case, similar case, can be beautifully managed with the plate without any problem. Again, uh, spiral fracture like this. If the spiral fracture doesn't fit into one another just like this, so we are trying to, we are going to get align malalignment. So spiral fracture is all or none. Either you get good reduction or you don't get good reduction. So that kind of a fracture it is. And sometimes if you, are, if you are doing nailing and if you're not able to get that final five millimeter of crunch down there, then we may land up in some kind of displacement there and that is a drawback of nail. And again, look at this. Uh, if you don't put polar screw or something, we can get translational malalignment mal with the plate, uh, with the nail. Similar fracture, again you see, there's a lot of opening and rotational malalignment that we see. So this kind of malalignments we do see with nail and this thing. So distal tibia fracture, we know it's a very notorious area because there's minimal muscular attachment to that area. The skin that over that area is thin and this is again more prone to trauma, uh, repeated trauma and skin is often involved due to lack of vascularity and or venous stasis because many of the middle-aged patients will have the skin changes around the distal tibia region. So that again uh, makes it a little bit tricky to manage this fracture. And the common issues that we face in distal tibia fractures are non-union, malunion, infection, ankle stiffness, implant prominence, and skin breakout. And let's see what, what, how can we do. So plating for the distal tibia fractures can be either open or can be minimally invasive. Uh, it can be either lateral or it can be medial, or it can be with the fibula or without the fibula fixation. Okay, so when you are aiming at a primary union when you, when you have to do a absolute stability, uh, such as two-part fracture, maybe a spiral fracture, we have very good bone stock, then you can use lag screw and rigid fixation, and then in that case, we cannot put a nail. So in those cases, we want to do plating. So fracture like this, uh, a 22-year-old female, uh, fracture like this, and uh, uh, kind of an oblique fracture and we can put a nice lag screw and then we can support that lag screw with a locking plate and that's how this fracture is fixed. Another fracture, 21 year old male, similarly managed with a percutaneous lag screw and then fix it. When we do a fibula fracture fixation, if it is a distal, if it is in the distal 7 to 8 millimeters uh, of the malleolus, we are going to do a distal fibula fixation. Uh, 
and either we can use an intramedullary nail device or a plate. So fracture like this, very distal, we can combine it with the plate, um, especially if it is comminuted, and then we can either plate it or sometimes fracture like this, which is transverse fracture of the fibula again, we can combine and uh, with it and pass a um, intramedullary nailing device to support that fibula fracture. Now, when to do medial and when to do lateral plating for the distal tibia? It depends on three things. Number one, size of distal fragment direction of the translation of the digital fragment and whether they or not there is interarticular extension. Look at this fragment now. This fragment is going in a valgus, is going sli tilting slightly towards medially, the medial part, and it's sufficiently large fragment, so here medial plating needs to be done because you know that will push the fragment laterally. Uh, on the other hand, fracture, fragment, fracture like this, it's a very low fragment going distally. In that case, if you are putting a medial plate, then the screw are going there is no sufficient bone stock for the plate to hold, uh, hold the distal fragment towards the plate. So in that case, we need to push the fragment uh, by the, using a lateral plate. So we can do the antilateral plate like this, and that's how it was fixed and the fracture united very well. If the fragment is very large, very large, then irrespective of the size, whether it is going medial or laterally, you can use medial plate because that is much more simpler and uh, minimally invasive. In case you are uh, having an intra-articular extension again, you can use a, a medial plate. Uh, a fracture like this, so it is still small, but still going laterally, but it is in a, in, a, in a pediatric population, which has a very good healing potential. And again, here we can go ahead and do a medial plating for this kind of fracture. Now, another indication uh, for plate fixation is when you are, anyway, open procedure is indicated. Fracture like this, it was an open fracture tibia, I think uh, was managed with the external fixate and a flap. And then uh, later on, uh, we need to do, uh, we go ahead and do bone grafting of that area. And then anyway, we have to open that area for alignment. And in that case, better to pass a plate and fix it. So that's how it uh, is after the bone grafting and plating. And that's how it has united after the bone grafting. So when we are, uh, we are trying to um, choose between plate or nail or, or for that matter any other fixation device, we need to see union rates, time to union, functional score, knee pain, ankle pain, complication and return to employment. Lo now look at this uh, 2016 paper by Valier and uh, he, he has gone through the extensive evidence and they say uh, this union rate with both nail and plate and healing of the tibia after nailing may be slowed in patient with fixation of the fibula, that is one thing. Then rate of infection and secondary operation also matter. Soft tissue complications and infection are more related to open fractures and severe soft tissue injury and not with related to the, um, uh, the mode of fixation that we use. So the infection rates were related to the pre previous soft tissue injury and not to the mode of fixation. This is the RCT again. There is again high rate of um, uh, primary union rate. Uh, infection rate on infection and secondary procedure were similar. Now, I am nailing was associated with more al malalignment versus plating. So this is a no-brainer. We know that uh, close nature of fixation, difficult to re uh, control the fracture, and then you are going to have ma high malalignment rate. Fibula fixation may facilitate anatomical reduction. And um, uh, again, non-union of tibia was more frequent after nails versus plate, and that is what is uh, RCT I'm quoting. I'm not quoting uh, any other prospective or uh, cohort study as uh, quoted by Dr. Sachin. Yeah. So again, a meta-analysis of and, uh, almost 1,300 patients, satisfactory result can be obtained by both, and nailing is again um, associated with higher rate of malunion and anti knee pain, and plate is associated with higher risk of infection, and that is what is the after meta-analysis of 1,300 patients. Another, again, this is a study, satisfactory result with both, uh, similar result for functional score. Uh, however, uh, they recommend that for a poor uh, soft tissue condition, nail is uh, recommended, or otherwise you can use plate. Uh, similar, again, if you see multiple uh, meta-analyses and reviews, they, they reverberate the same thing, that nail is associated with malalignment, plate is uh, associated with maybe soft tissue uh, uh, complications, again, same. Uh, uh, this is the study which uh, compare MIPO versus IM nail and they said uh, there's a less complication rate with IM nail, especially in the non-union rate. Again, big randomized control trial systematic review, they say that um, they, they, right now there is no sufficient evidence to judge the superiority of one over the other and new locking plate are uh, showing more promising results. So take home message, both the treatment are apparent, yes. 
choose the best approach for the injury and i think the title of this uh, session is is uh, just does the justice that nailing is possible but plating is safer and safer and simpler so nail causes malalignment yes higher rate of malalignment plate has issue of infection and soft tissue complication so if you are poor soft tissue to begin with go for nail if there is no soft tissue injury and patient needs to nail or anti knee pain is a issue then use plate uh, uh, definitely more distal fracture do plate and two part spiral fracture i think nail is likely to cause malalignment so you can choose a uh, nail in that case Thank you.